morning and a welcome to UPN Focus. I'm your host, Milt Thompson. And as you know, for the last several weeks, we've been bringing you all sorts of organizations talking about their role in our community. Well, we're going to play a little different tune today by talking about the American Pianist Association. And we're going to do that with our guest, our very special guest, Frank. How's that? We're going <laughs> to that is with David Polak, who is their uh, artistic director of the American Pianist Association. Welcome to our show. And uh, my good friend Helen Small, who is the executive director of the American Pianists Association. Now, that sounds pretty lofty, and it doesn't sound quite as provincial as the Indianapolis Pianists Association. So why American? And tell us a little bit about its history. It is a nationwide organization that's based here in Indianapolis. Um, and what we do is look for young American pianists who we can support for a period of time during a time in their career where they need particular nurturing. These are usually classical and jazz pianists who are younger than 30. Traditionally, they've been 18 to 30, people who've gone through professional training and are looking for a professional career in uh, performance. Well, tell me how to get started. Who was interested? There had to be someone who said, this segment of pianists in the world uh, needs, needs a help. home and needs a... Uh. And that's exactly what happened. Back in 1979, there were three people that started the organization. Um, one of them was Tony Hobbig, who um, owns or did own Kimball International. Right. And he was uh, over in Europe a lot and saw that the pianists who were... Uh, performing in the halls over there were winners of international competitions and they were largely European. Very few American pianists were winning the major international competitions. And so he rang up his friend Julius Bloom, who was the um, manager of Carnegie Hall at that time, mm -hmm. and also Victor Borga, and said, you know, we really need to do something for our American pianists because we're not being represented well in the international competitions. And so they started this organization. They originally called it the Beethoven Foundation. And they wanted to hold a, a competition for classical pianists in New York City, and they were going to do it, you know, every couple of years or so. Well, they soon decided that Indianapolis would be a better location for actually housing the base organization. And for a variety of reasons, some of them have to do with the fact that we're Victor understated, <laughs> although a very, very wonderful, culturally diverse yes. uh, uh, um, a city when it comes to our cultural activities. But but why, when it, why Indianapolis? Yeah, New York, yeah. Indianapolis. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I figure, go figure. Well, Victor Borga's wife was from Southern Indiana, and so also was Tony Hobbick from Southern Indiana. And so they, you know, they thought, well, you know, the Midwest is a pretty nice place to be, and and uh, so rather than locating it in southern Indiana, they said, well, let's go to the big metropolis of Indianapolis. So and tell me about the organization today. What, um, what's its structure? How is it comprised? Uh, who's involved? And, and uh, the movers and shakers that uh, help make up um, uh, this segment for their benefaction. We, we've made great strides in, in the 20 years that we've been in existence. Um, our most notable uh, figure uh, and, and leader is our board president, Crystal DeHaan, whom I'm sure most everyone in Indiana has heard of. Uh, she is a major philanthropist. She's given uh, widely to a number of arts organizations and other causes. And as a matter of fact, she um, contributed 500000 to an endowment that the APA has and then challenged us to also raise another 500000 which she would match as we raise it. So really a two-for-one kind of a, a match. Really. Yes, yes. So we're halfway through that challenge matching, and not very many arts organizations have endowments, and this is a, a tremendous benefit to us um, a, as we continue to grow. And um, well, one of the ways that, that the organization changed early on in the 80s was that we expanded into jazz. And so we changed the, they changed the name from the Beethoven Foundation to the American Pianist Association so that that would reflect that broader reach. But one of the things that uh, we all agree has um, lifted this organization to the, the position where we are now, and we can talk more about that later, but um, my cohort, David Pocock, who is the artistic director, uh, came on right before I did in, in uh, 97. And he is such a notable person in the music world and has contacts everywhere. He, his ideas have kind of reshaped the way we conduct our competitions, particularly the classical competition. 
and um, so you're you're a 501c3 and, and organized as a mm -hmm. nonprofit organization. Yes. Um, ha but having a, a national reach uh, and also involved in international competition. So yes. you're really kind of a home base for a, a global organization, really. Actually, well, our competition is national. It, it is not an international competition. We we search for the best. American talent that there is in both classical and jazz and, and we feel that that's one of the marks of distinction of our organization is that we support our, our, our own citizens in their efforts to um, uh, perform to perform their art. Well, David, maybe just a little segue to, to some to questions sure. for you. Uh, um, the the uh, artistic community um, um, sometimes uh, runs around a little bit uh, with guide or vision on. They're so much interested on their very, very narrow slice of the pie um, uh, and perhaps miss out opportunities for collaborations. Uh, uh, what, what kind of uh, partners uh, are involved uh, from the artistic side of the shop, and we'll do that from the business side of the shop too, but from the, from the artistic side of the shop that uh, really inspires or induces others to want to participate? Uh, and, and, and getting uh, world-class national uh, uh, competitors uh, uh, involved? Uh, well, there are two kinds of collaboration that we do. One is the kind of collaboration in which we present people largely here in Indianapolis. For example, we work with the Indianapolis Chamber Orchestra and do a series of five or six concerts each season with the Chamber Orchestra, and we collaborate with Butler University, where we're housed, and we collaborate with the local piano teaching organizations. And as our winners have gone out and played, and they've played in Japan, and they've played in Boston, and they've played in Los Angeles and New York, and you name it. Uh, we also work uh, closely with a lot of universities and presenters to make sure that, uh, that we've got an audience where we're going, and that the, the kids that win the APA can interact with the students at various universities. So we often, instead of doing uh, just in and out for a concert, as most pianists do, we try to, uh, to, to put together residencies in which they teach master classes, teach lessons, hang around the school for a little while. Uh, one of our most recent classical winners, Ning An, is going to be at the uh, Mississippi State University and in Palm Beach, Florida, and University of Nevada, Las Vegas. I might go along on that one. <laughs> well, particularly <laughs> if it's cold outside. Absolutely. And in Las Vegas, he'll be there for several days, and he's going to do... Uh, in, in actually, in each place, he's going to do a master class, a lecture, a workshop, a recital, and meet with the students, meet with the faculty. And I, I think it's really important that we don't just provide these kids a chance to play, but that they really get a chance to collaborate with their colleagues. Well, Helen mm -hmm. was talking a little, bit, a little bit about the positioning of the American Piano Soci mm -hmm. uh, Association here uh, in, in the cultural landscape here in Indianapolis. Mm -hmm. um, um, obviously, it is a little bit more well known since uh, because of some of its benefactors, some of its help in, the, in its outreach, and that you get some sort of national publicity that ties that in. Yes. Uh, um, but uh, how, how do you utilize that platform to, to enhance the image uh, of not only a fledgling uh, a pianist, but uh, also the organization? Um, what, one of the ways that we have, um, that, that we've actually leveraged um, the, our, our, our new marketing um, stature is through um, uh, some interesting articles that have come out about the American Pianist Association since we changed our format for the classical competition in particular. Um, competitions normally, you know, go... Um, you know, you, you bring in a large number of, of performers and you have judges uh, narrow it down in rounds that just kind of go boom, 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 and you wind up with six or whatever, and, and then you give uh, prizes according to first, second, third, gold, silver, bronze, this sort of thing. The American Pianist Association has actually never given structured prizes like that. They've always given equal fellowships. But since David has arrived, um, now then, the whole way we conduct the competition is, is very, very different, much more nurturing. And, not more, and, and I want to interrupt because we've got to go to take a short uh, break, okay. but I want to talk more about okay. uh, on the specifics of the competition and how people get involved. We'll do that right after these short okay. words. Welcome back to UPN Focus. Uh, we've been talking about the American Pianist Association with my good friend Helen Small. Uh, she wanted to know what was on my watch. What it said? That's a Larry Bird watch. We'll talk about that another another show. <laughs> and David Pollock, who's there, 
uh, artistic director. And before we uh, ran away to a break, we were talking about the leverage uh, of the, the artistic competition, if you will, into the position that you have in this, uh, this artistic community. And, and you were about to talk about the distinction between classical, the, uh, the, 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 the growth into the jazz and other uh, art forms, uh, in, specifically in piano. In particular, we wanted to talk about the, the growth and change in the direction of our classical competition format. Um, this is largely due to, to David's influence when, when he came to the organization. Um, well, I remember one of the first lunches that we went to together. He, he, I mean, here he is. He's hired as the artistic director of the American Pianist Association, which runs competitions. And he tells me, I hate competitions. And <laughs> I'm thinking, it's true, it's true, yeah. <laughs> how does that die? <laughs> well, I have, a, I have a hard time with competing in the arts. I mean, who plays a slow movement of a Mozart concerto more beautifully or who is more expressive in a Chopin nocturne? It's really comparing apples and oranges, and each artist has an individual statement to make. That being said, you want to find a mechanism that you can identify the people that really have the most to say to an audience. But I. I want to do it in a humane way. I want to treat everyone that comes in here as an artist and as an honored guest in Indianapolis and not as uh, you know, slugging it out mano a mano up there in some kind of contest. Uh, the other problem is that there are, uh, for example, in Italy there are 600 competitions with the word international in it just in Italy. So it's really hard to get into the marketplace and make a difference and become noticed. But we've got a brand new format uh, which uh, basically we identify the finalists before they come here through a tape round and then we bring them in one at a time rather than having them compete number one is from 10 to 10 15 number two from 10 15 to 10 30 and so on and then the inevitable you know so it removes the out. feel of direct competition <coughs> at the same exactly. time um, permitting the, the, the fullest application uh, yeah, of exactly. their talents uh, exactly and, and so how, how are they judged well, each one comes in for about a week, um, <clears throat> and they come in spaced by a month. So September, October, December, January, February. So it becomes like a series, just like a musical yeah, series. Musical series, right? So they're kind of judged mm -hmm. over a set of criteria. Yes. that's right. And each one plays their solo recital. Each one plays a concerto with the chamber orchestra. Each one does community outreach programs, which we'll talk about a little bit later. And all of that is videotaped uh, by professional videographers and sent into a 12-panel jury, which has some very famous names on it. Those 12 people watch all the videotapes. We had five finalists this last go-around. And from those five, uh, they vote, basically. It can be up and down, yes, no, or it can be based on different criteria. But they let their feelings be known, and, and they rank them eventually, and we rank them eventually. Then we do, rather than a competition, at the end of this process, we do a festival. In the festival, these five finalists uh, come back to Indianapolis and they share programs, share solo recitals. They shared a, uh, uh, an evening of voice with Stephen Stoll, and they shared five chamber music concerts with the Blair String Quartet. And they did free lunchtime recitals at the Wood Room downtown. And, and basically, we just, I think we did, I don't know, 15 or so events in a week. It's very busy. There's lots busy. of fun. Mm -hmm. uh, obviously, there, uh, there is a winner, yet at the same time, we're not talking about well, these other there's, contestants. There's there are two, two winners. winners. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, two equal uh, but, winners. But, but, but the other com competitors, if you will, are, are not quite chopped liver. Uh, they, they're very, very, very talented in, in their own right, and I expect that the, uh, if you make it to the round of finalists, that the, this can have a measurable impact uh, on, on your careers. Tell us about some of those people, David, that have, have uh, come through the competition and uh, uh, where are they placed, and what has the value of the association added to uh, uh, the, their career uh, outreach? Well, and also for the finalists, it's not just a prestige for their career, but we pay them rather handsomely for every concert that they play. It's the so best when, kind of contest. When they come in, they get paid <laughs> from, the, from the first day they get here until six months later when the, the whole process is done. And um, they get reviewed in the newspaper, and they get... Uh, treated to dinners and they get treated to parties and receptions and so I really think it's fair to say that everybody that's been here as a finalist feels like a winner. Um, of course the winners feel more like winners than the, the people who don't succeed but... Um, Tell us about some of uh, the, these recent winners and what they're doing I mean the, um, yeah, and how a, and what, what they were doing perhaps before uh, the competition and then, and then after to, to, to measure a some impact. APA has a wonderful track record of identifying some pretty outstanding American pianists uh, in the class of 1995, for example, only five years ago, 
There were three winners, uh, Zuing Song, Anthony Molinaro, and Jim Giles. Zuing Song is under management with Joanne Ryle. She's touring all over the world. She toured with the Paul Taylor Dance Company to Australia and Europe last year. Made a video with a grant from, the, from Crystal DeHaan and uh, is just very active. She's a, a real-life concert pianist living in New York. Jim Giles just became chairman of the piano department at University of Nevada, Las Vegas. Not too bad. Not too bad. And Anthony Molinaro won the very prestigious Naumburg competition in New York and again is out there concertizing and, and he just made a CD with St. Martin's in the Fields and Andrew Litton and uh, they're all quite success stories. If you go just two years later to 97, two years is a big difference in this business. Um, Peter Miyamoto is finishing a DMA, Hiroko Kunitaki just finished a, a, a doctorate in, in piano and Darison Duace is teaching privately up in Seattle, started a new studio. So these guys are not quite as far along in their career, but um, they played uh, more than 50 concerts under the auspices of the APA in the time that they were fellows. Well, as an aspirant out there, I'm out there working hard, practicing with, the, with my, uh, my teacher and all, and, and I say, you know, I think I'm getting good enough, and my teacher thinks I'm getting good enough. Now, how do I um, get involved in the competition? How do I uh, sign up? There, there are two ways. Last, uh, last time for the classical competition, you actually couldn't sign up. You had to be recommended or nominated by someone. It was a very large group of nominators, and so we really tried to scour the United States for the best possible talent. But if you weren't nominated, you couldn't come to the competition. Uh, this time around, probably, although we haven't decided 100%, it's going to be by nomination, and also you can apply. So we want to make sure that we don't leave anybody out. Um, and then... You send in your materials, you've got to prove that you're an American citizen under the age of 30, and then we ask for two tapes of live performances, and that is sent to a preliminary jury that winnows it down to the group of finalists. So in other words, you have to come highly recommended in order to even to get on the invitation list to get on the preliminary. Uh, the, the distinction between, uh, uh, why did you add jazz uh, versus that of just, just, just classical? I mean, uh, uh, people are wondering about the disciplines and wondering if that really is piano playing at its highest levels. Well, I think so. Oh. Uh, it's, a, it's a distinctly American art form, first of all. It is certainly... The piano is, is key to jazz, uh, their jazz. No pun. Jazz yes. everything, <laughs> as it were, yeah. Um, and uh, I don't think that it's any kind of dichotomy at all. There are other jazz competitions. There's the Thelonious Monk in New York and one in Jacksonville, Florida. But um, for young jazz pianists, in a sense, it's even harder than for young classical pianists to find some way of rising above the crowd. And what a competition like the APA can do is you've got uh, jury members who come in who are extremely well connected. We've had Billy Taylor and Ramsey Lewis and uh, you know people people at that level listening. And then again, it's a fellowship rather than a prize. So it's ten thousand dollars. It's a CD and it's as many concerts as we can organize. Um, so it seems important to help uh, promulgate the the jazz art form. In the United States, particularly in recognition of uh, in Indianapolis and the home base, and the uh, association having yeah. the significant history and heritage, and then obviously with uh, you know uh, jazz festas otherwise that are around that are bringing more attention to that art form, as well as having you know jazz departments like at Indiana University and right. uh, David Baker's uh, wonderful programming there. Okay. Uh, you had mentioned earlier something about community outreach, and that's really kind of the heart of, of uh, our discussion today. And 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 uh, right after we uh, take a short break, I want to talk about the community outreach. Uh, and the positioning and then how other people might get involved uh, in your organization and we'll do that right after these important words. Welcome back to UPN Focus. We've been talking about one of our national organizations that has its headquarters here in Indianapolis, the American Pianist Association, and I'm certain that it has some influence on our local community um, by having your presence here. Tell us about that uh, in terms of outreach. We certainly hope that it does. Um, I think that um, I, I know that our board and, and staff are all very committed to um, not only reaching traditional audiences that enjoy classical and jazz music, but to bring the art form to as many possible people as there are and to diverse populations in, in um, all ages. We have a program called the Concerto Curriculum that we run um, annually where our uh, classical and jazz fellows will go to um, 
schools, high schools, grade schools, and perform or um, have three-day residencies with um, the high school conductor and the high school orchestra. This uh, just in itself raises the, the level of the performance uh, for the high school students. It's, it's just a wonderful Particularly opportunity. Particularly a day when you know schools are saying these, those are amenities. They are not, mm -hmm. not, not right. core not to learning. Uh, and, and I mean, I, I don't espouse no. that at all. Neither completely do I. opposite. Yeah. We also take the, the uh, fellows into community centers and churches and retirement homes. And it, it's always mixed with you know, question and answer, um, workshops, uh, master classes. Just we do a lot of uh, not only performing but um, educating with the program. We've developed a wonderful relationship, for example, with the Martin Luther King Center. And, um, We've done programs for senior citizens there and for their ladies club and for the little kids and for the after school program. We bring in a piano and they provide the audience and it's just been a joy for us. And in some cases we know that these are audience members that have not experienced classical music I in this way before. So they're exposed to new art forms yep. and new experiences and, mm -hmm. and exposes also um, your role uh, in this fabric of our community yes. uh, that is our rich uh, cultural experience. How do people get involved? We have a, a wonderful organization called the Friends of the APA, and anybody can join. It's $25 a year or $40 for two people, and there are lots of benefits uh, to joining. You get our newsletter, which is four times a year. You also get invited to free um, evenings of um, uh, educational performance socializing called Music Matters that happens from September through May each year. It's a wonderful group of people. So you can participate as a patron, you can participate as a benefactor, and you can also participate with some of the community outreach yes. with the wonderful activities that go on at the American Pianist Association, and you'll take advantage of some of these calendar events here in our town. Here are some more events in our area for you to focus on. We want to hear from you. Send your event information three weeks in advance to be part of the UPN 23 community calendar. And I know you'll take advantage of these wonderful uh, calendar opportunities just as we've taken advantage of our special guest today, David Pocock and Helen Small from the American Pianist Association. And you come right back here this time next week for another version of UPN Focus. <laughs>